Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese drama land in the past week. My mouth. Last time I said, hope there isn't gonna be too much crazy drama of the uh, Weibo night. And wow, it's the most amount of drama Weibo night ever. We're gonna leave that till the end. First, let's still talk about drama land stuff. Everything that has gone live is kind of according to schedule, only one is different, which is on the 27th, a drama aired. It kind of told everybody it's gonna air one or two days before, but then before that, there was almost no promotion, no news about it. And it is the Ming Dynasty setting, sort of spy and crime and investigation and a little bit suspense and thriller mixed drama. Shenhe Zhi Ying. Current English title is Pledge of Allegiance. A long time ago, it's called Shadow of River and Mountain, which is the literal translation of the Chinese title. It actually has been finished for quite a while and just waiting for time to go live. It is led by Zhang Yunlong, Chen Ruoxuan, Sun Yi. It's a night qi yi period. Drama is gonna finish sort of end of next week. And I have been following this drama since it went live because I've been looking forward to it for a long time. So far, I'm very happy about the quality. It's better than I thought it's gonna be. And I'm just really thrilled that finally Zhang Yunlong gets such a major role in a drama where he is the definitive lead and it's a really high quality period drama production. This is a 24 episodes drama and it's an original script, so we don't know how the story is gonna end. It looks like a rather complicated story. I sincerely hope the script writing holds up till the end and if it's so, it's likely to be one of my favorites of this year. Just like, let's hope that works out. Then we have a drama on April the 5th is scheduled to go live on Mango Television and Hunan Television called Bing or Bao Bing, really both pronunciation can work. English translation is the direct translation Thin Ice. Ming Guo setting, espionage drama. It is led by Peng Guanyin and Chen Yuqi. Younger actors will also feature Gao Hanyu and Chen Xiaoyun. And then you're gonna have a lot of supporting roles who are everything considered much bigger stars. So this is a classic, more veteran, more established actors pulling the younger generation actors drama. Although technically speaking, Peng Guanyin is not that young. Here are the names of the supporting roles, such as Fu Dalong, Wang Jingsong, Wu Yue, Dong Jie. It does include some of the best actors and actresses and my favorites. So I do hope this drama works out, although I honestly don't have that much confidence in Peng Guanyin and Chen Yuqi leading the drama. It seems to be a rather classic espionage drama with a lot of torture involved. Then we have a couple of possible to happen, may happen very soon, but still hasn't happened. And in all likelihood, it's gonna happen next week or so drama. Likely early April, a drama is gonna go live. And this is the long waited period fantasy drama, Chang Yue Jinmin, Till the End of the Moon, led by Luo Yunxi and Bai Lu. It's not confirmed yet, but the rumors are flying everywhere. And I just don't see why it doesn't happen. So it may happen very soon, next week, something like that. And then the other drama that is likely to show up also soon enough is Chang Xiangsi, Lost Shoe Forever, another fantasy period drama led by Yang Zi and three men. <laughs> Reason being, they've released more trailer material this week, but also they've started all the character official account on social media. So if you go on Weibo, you'll see the female lead character, her account, all the other major characters in this drama in the character name account have been registered. They all have the consistent look and style. So that's clearly a sign for promotion. If that happens with Chang Yue Jimin, we're gonna have a bloody battle in the fantasy drama land and see which one wins. <laughs> I'm already excited. Then we have a couple of dramas that are either already shooting or will start shooting very soon. And some of them are the rumored projects I've talked about a couple of weeks ago that hasn't been confirmed yet. Now they are a go. First, a drama has started shooting on the 30th and it is another espionage drama set in Ming Guo time. <laughs> and this drama right now on their opening ceremony and also on the printed script, it's called Harbin 1944, literally means Harbin, the city in northeastern China, and 1944. Previously, it's actually called the city that has only me in it, something like that. And if you go on 
drama list, you'll still see that title right now in pinyin. So it doesn't have an English official title, but um, the uh, opening ceremony title now is Harbin 1944. It's led by Yao Mi and Qing Hao. Huh, I never thought these two people belong to the same kind of drama land. It's gonna be very interesting to see how this project is gonna turn out. We also have a project that is likely to start shooting very soon. And the main cast hasn't been announced yet. And it's the Daylight Entertainment Zhong Wu Yangguang production I've mentioned two weeks ago when I was talking about Zhong Wu Yangguang's list of dramas to come out. And that is the contemporary one, Fan Ren Ge, Born to be the One. And it is said to be very similar to If There's No Tomorrow, led by Guo Jingfei. That drama, if you've watched it, you like that type of story, you have another one coming. Presumably, we'll find out who's gonna be the lead soon. The only thing that is not looking very promising about this project is it's directed by the director Jie Chuanhe, who is technically speaking on the third tier of the directors that Zhong Yangguang has. And he's done a couple of projects previously that didn't get the best result. The next project that is also about to start shooting is another contemporary drama that is called Shijian literally means who is on the other bank across the river of time. I don't think it has an official English title yet. It's gonna be led by Zhong Hanliang and Qin Lan. A couple who broke up many years ago and coming back together. Does that remind you of Zhong Hanliang and Li Xiaoran's drama? I'm curious to see this time whether they're gonna use Zhong Hanliang's real voice because his Mandarin really hasn't improved <laughs> all these years. <laughs> as stable as what he sounded like 20 years ago. Then to wrap up today's video, we have two pieces of uh, just like drama and drama. Number one is during this week, Liu Yuning had an episode of epic display of how to do public relation in the most effective way. Around the middle of the week, this really nasty paparazzi person publicly announced on the internet addressing Liu Yuning, I have stuff on you. I know your skeleton in your closet. Come out clean or I'll expose you. The next morning, this guy threw out this piece of news very, very maliciously, basically saying, Liu Yuning, you married before you divorced. You have a kid with a woman and you never come clean about it. So what is your response? And the cool thing about Liu Yuning as a singer and also actor now is he's working on a drama and he already had makeup done that morning and this thing comes out. Within one hour of that gossip thing happened, he got on his live streaming platform because he's a live streamer and he almost live streams like daily or kind of every week a couple of days in the evening for hours and he would sing songs for his fans and it's very well known. He has already that platform that's readily available. He immediately jumps onto his own live stream and address that issue within one hour <laughs> while he's still dressed up for the day's work and he clearly told everybody about what happened which is it's 10 years ago it was like 2013 that he was married he married very early and he divorced very early so he had a short marriage with a lady and then they are divorced and then they are just not really in contact anymore the kid is not his kid is later she got married to another guy which is like her husband right now. And so that's the child with that guy. Basically said he didn't got into entertainment business until 2018, five years after his divorce. There's one thing he said really intelligently, which is everything I've got after I became a uh, you know public figure, that lady didn't benefit any from that. So now you drag her into this. You expose her photo and her kid's photo in front of public view, the paparazzi person that is very immoral unethical. And then he said he never really tried to cover it up. It's just not relevant to his current life anymore. So he put that out very clearly and basically at the end and saying, you know, I'm gonna pursue it in a, in a legal way, you know, to the end, just for the sake of the people that got affected in this. And also he kind of apologized to his previous partner. This is totally because of him. And he did this in 10 minutes and then walk away. This is the fastest public relation response of a entertainment person we've seen in Chinese drama to date and by the person himself, not by his studio, not by a written statement. He literally got up in front of the camera and just saying blah, 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 and then that's it. The funny thing is that paparazzi person, you know, did this obviously trying to <laughs> smear other people's names and get attention and whatever. And by doing that, he actually made Liu Yuning more popular. In a way, made him look even better. It is by no means saying this person is perfect, but at least what he's done is really just very proper. I guess in comparison to a lot of dodgy, coward-like and irresponsible responses we've seen from entertainment people previously. He just stand in comparison, so... <laughs>
Now, apart from his singing voice and his extremely ridiculous straight and long and skinny legs, you have another reason to like him. To conclude, let's talk briefly about what happened. <laughs> Weibo night, Weibo night, holy! <laughs> the live eating melon, drinking tea uh, scenery. So this is actually 2022 Weibo G and not 2023 because it got delayed. It was COVID lockdown didn't happen, so they moved this to 2023. This year's event is so disastrous that while it's going on, everybody on Weibo is literally saying this is Weibo 最后之夜, the last Weibo night of Weibo nights, because it's so bad. It kind of is no longer validating this event's existence for the future. If Weibo tries to do that, everybody's going to boycott it. So what happened was, because so many people are coming to this event, and also because Weibo heated it up really early on and encouraged fandom behavior, like I said last week, of just fighting against each other to get the entering the venue tickets and rights. It caused a huge security problem. On the afternoon and evening of Weibo night on Sunday last weekend, at the place where it's gonna happen in Shanghai, so many fans of different stars who are coming to this event have queued up, packed with too many people who have like <laughs> flags flying. Different people's fandoms are already almost like fighting. It's like multiple armies at a messy battlefield. So it's already looking very dangerous. And Shanghai does have, since COVID upped the regulation about how many people you can have in the public space for all security reasons. Earlier on, what we've seen happening in South Korea about too many people gather and shit happens. So the carpet happened like halfway. Not all the stars have gone through the carpet yet. The event got immediately canceled, like midway. The regulation bodies, the police, like special force police came into the site and literally just halted the whole red carpet. Disperse the crowd. We don't have a red carpet anymore. Go back to your, you know, wherever you are and don't collect and crowd here because it's looking like shit is about to happen. So red carpet of Weibo night stopped in the middle. We have more than half of the stars who haven't actually come onto the carpet and they have no chance ever to show their dresses and their looks in that way anymore. And the drama didn't stop there. Once they got into the venue, the seating arrangement is so intentionally done by Weibo to create more drama. For example, they put Huge and Liu Yifei sitting together, but then on the other side of Huge is the Xianzan people, is <laughs> Yang Mi Liu Shi Shi. So this side is Chinese Paladin 1, this China side is Chinese Paladin 3. Then when everything is going on, the live streaming directors cutting the camera angles is so intentionally just doing the melons. For example, Huang Xiaoming talking, they're cutting the next shot to Angela Baby sitting down there and talking to other people. When Guo Fan, the Liu Lang Di Qiu, Wandering Earth director is getting all the awards on the stage. They will cut the shot to Zhang Yimou sitting down there. Wang Yibo is up there. They literally cut a shot of the CP fans of Wang Yibo and Xiao Chan. Weibo, like I said, thrives. It's it's a vampire. It thrives on this type of thing. And it's just so blatant the way they do it. It's funny, ridiculous, and disgusting at the same time. That's not yet the end of the whole thing, right? You have Tang Yan didn't get into the venue, so she was late. She got arrangement of another piece of work, which is already pretty ridiculous on the same day, a live stream. Her studio, whatever, her team arranged her to do that. So once she finished that, she has to rush to the <laughs> Weibo night venue and she got delayed because traffic. Hey, we have traffic. She's like 20 minutes late. And because of the whole event security level and also because of what just happened, like the red carpet got stopped, she couldn't get in. She didn't show up for the Weibo night. She's already dressed up, but she didn't manage to sit in that line of the Xianjian, you know, seat. By the end, Hu Ge and Liu Yifei gets the king and queen, so well, nobody cares about it. Why? Because this time the Weibo night invited over 120 people. And then over 100 people get awards. <laughs> as long as you're here, you're gonna get something. And the way they worded all those awards is just testing the limit of Chinese language about how many different ways of calling the same awards you can think of so that you can give everybody a trophy. That is the whole event. Super self-congratulatory and <laughs> stupid and failed in so many ways. Life is just so much more dramatic than dramas. At least in dramas, you have to follow logic. But in reality, uh, not really. That should conclude this week's video from Avenue X. Happy April. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.